5116 time and today we are going to be talking about phylum Cnidaria. Siguro hindi niyo kakilala yung term na Cnidarian, but I bet you if we mention anything along the lines of jellyfish, corals, anemone, then you have an idea what we are talking about. Pag pinagtabi-tabi mo sila, sobrang hindi obvious, 'di ba, na magkakamag-anak sila. But they actually do have certain characteristics that unify them as a group. Cnidarians exhibit some type of radial symmetry. So that really means there's no front, there's no back, they don't really have a distinguished head, but they do have an aboral and an oral end. The oral end is where you find the opening of the mouth, and the aboral end is where you do not find the opening of the mouth. It's the opposite side. What is the advantage of having radial symmetry? The fact that you do not have a front or a back, and let's add the fact that the Cnidarian nervous system really doesn't have like a centralized brain. Instead, you have like a mesh or a network of nerve fibers that are more or less distributed across the entire body of the organism. You're living in water. It's, it's 360 degrees of just where anything can come from. Predator or prey can come from any direction. Having radial symmetry allows you to respond. You know, you know something pokes you here, you're like, Bam, I'm there. Bam, I'm there. Bam. Whereas if you have a like a distinct front and a back and somebody hey, taps your shoulder, you have to turn around before you can actually see, "Ho, oh, can I eat that thing?" No. Or it's like, "Shit, it's going to come after me." When we say cnidarians are diploblastic, that means that they have two main tissue layers, innermost gastrodermis, and then you have also your outermost epidermis. Cnidarians also exhibit two main body forms, the polyp form and the medusa form. Polyp form is the one that kind of just stays put, looks like a flower, sedentary. Corals are in this type of form, the polyp form. The tentacles are facing upwards, the mouth slash anus is also facing upwards. The other form, the one that moves around and swims around, that is the medusa body form. Instead, you have the tentacles that face downward, the mouth slash anus faces downward as well, and the medusa is essentially just baliktad na polyp. Either way, yung polyp, baliktad na medusa. I think one good way to remember this is if you just turn it into a dance. Polyp, medusa, mouth slash anus. What the fuck is going on right there? That's actually what it is. <laughs> it is a mouth and an anus. That is the multi-purpose hole. It's shitting where you eat. Gastrovascular cavity, ano nga ba to? It's just the main place where they kind of liquefy and digest their food. Kaya tinawag siyang gastrovascular. Mainly because it not only serves as kind of like their digestive system, but in a way, the respiratory gases also kind of get diffused through the channels of the gastrovascular system. It kind of serves a dual purpose in that sense. Pag sinabi mong cnidarian, ito na yon yung nasa pangalan nila mismo. Nidae, which is nettle or stinging nettle, they have tentacles with special cells called cnidocytes. They are special cells that line the tentacles of your cnidarians, and what they have inside is an organelle called a nematocyst. This nematocyst, in turn, has kind of like a barb, and then it kind of shoots out like a harpoon, and that is how they mainly get their food. They have the polyp form, the medusa form, the gastrovascular cavity. That really doesn't help them, especially the gastrovascular cavity, because what is one advantage of having a separate mouth and a separate anus? It's disgusting to think about it, but quite frankly, you can eat and shit at the same time. What if your entry hole is the same as the exit hole? You can't really have these two processes going on at the same time, God forbid. It's kind of difficult to eat and at the same time expel your waste because what if you end up eating the waste that you just expelled? That's disgusting. <laughs> so what happens is maybe you eat first, digest that, and spit it back out. That means the energy that they get from their food and the nutrients because it gets distributed to their body a lot slower, that means movement in and of itself is just much slower. That's why you have polyps that just choose to not move, and for the medusa that do choose to move, just look at how slow they are. Living this kind of life where, yeah, I can move, but I am how are you gonna capture food? God said you are gonna be a predator. Oh, the Cnidarian's like, fuck, how am I gonna do that? 
bam, here is my gift to you. I give you the Night of Sight with this fucking badass nematocyst that you can just poke into all of the food that you want to eat. Cnidarians are generally grouped into two major subphyla, Medusozoa and Anthozoa. They have three main classes. You have Hydrozoa, Scyphozoa, and Cubozoa. What is the vellum? Beaky vellum? Onion beaky vellum? <laughs> the vellum is just this extension of the bell inwards. Let's add a little bit of physics into the mix. Pressure equals force over area. If you have a smaller hole, and you exert the same force because the area kung saan lumalabas yung tubig mas maliit pressure is greater what that does for a medusa that's swimming is when it pushes out the water through a smaller hole edi parang in the same way na pag nagdidilig ka ng halaman di ba meron kang hose tatakpan mo ng bahagya yung hose di ba parang mas malayo yung nararating ng tubig that is why the vellum is present for these species and for Scyphozoans, they don't have that. You will notice, felagang bagal. Ropelia. These are the sensory organs that contains light sensing structures as well as like direction or gravity sensing structures that we call statoliths. Nandun si phytoplankton, nandun si zooplankton, nandun si zooplankton, nandun yung maliit na isda. Pag nandun yung maliit na isda, yun din ang kinakain ng Nidarian. They're all there together forever. And the yung in lapit lapite. So they have to have those structures that allow them to actually detect these places where their food might probably be. Strobilate, strobilation. Okay. So what is strobilation? For Skyphozoans, kasi, the way that they kind of reproduce is the medusa, they have like the male and the female, and then their sperm and egg will unite form one planula larva which will land somewhere and become a polyp. Yung polyp na yon, parang magkakaroon siya ng layers and layers. Parang isipin mo pancake, nagdadagdag ng stocks. And that is called strobilation. Yung bawat stock ng pancake na yon, maghihiwa-hiwala yon into an individual ephora. Class Hydrozoa, their gastrodermis does not have nematocysts. Yung polyp form nila, iba-iba yung itsura ng polyps, iba-iba rin yung ginagawa specialized so you have feeding polyps you have reproductive polyps so you might hear terms like gastrozooid gonozooid dactylozooids but they are working together in a colony they're very much interdependent they can't live without each other together forever hydra is solitary obelia is colonial and that's where you're gonna see the different polyps so you're gonna see gastrozooids and then you also have the gonozooids alam nyo na dapat kung ano yung ina-expect nyong itsura depende dun sa function ng polyp may gusto lang ako idagdag na isa which is the portuguese man of war scientifically the genus is physalia tipi mo may plastic bag na may hangin tapos may wig sa ilalim na nakasabit dun the bag of air that's floating on the water is actually called a pneumatophore and it just helps the whole colony of polyps that are underneath dangling underneath that just kind of helps them float around and drift around Skyphozoan the swimming bell does not have a vellum that means that the bell just kind of goes down like that Whoop! the tentacles are found along the margin of the bell so ano tong mga nakikita nyo sa gitna na malalaki. You might think, oh, yun yung tentacles. No! Those are the oral arms. Iba yung oral arm, iba yung tentacle. Let's just be clear with that. Si Cassiopeia, so upside down. Bakit siya upside down? Yung kanyang oral arms, may mga kasama siya, may mga alaga, which we call zoosanthaly. Sugars that are produced by the algae from photosynthesis, nakikinabang dun yung cnidarian. And in exchange, of course, the algae gets like free, a free place to live, free source of carbon dioxide and other nitrogenous waste. Kaya siya upside down kasi yung kanyang oral arms kung asa nandoon yung photosynthetic algae, kailangan itapat niya sa araw. Cubozoans or the box jellies. From the name itself, it's shaped like a box, particularly the swimming bell. The tentacles of cubozoans are just along the corners of the swimming bell. The common species that we would have, we have Chironex, we also have Chirosalmus. Sobrang see-through nila, hindi mo halos sila makikita. Nagkataon, pumunta kayo ng beach, bakasyon kayo ng pamilya nyo. Listen to your guides, try to ask around sa locals if it's jelly season. Because if it is jelly season, then you don't want to get in the water unless, you know, you're willing to risk death. <laughs> I, I don't know, but yeah. Diba? Kung nag nagpapakayolo ka, edi fine, punta ka sa tubig. Let's establish the fact that all members of Anthozoa 
are exclusively in the polyp form. Their medusa stage is, if anything, poorly studied or perhaps virtually absent. Halos hindi to nakikita sa kanilang life cycle. So what we really see in the water are all polyps, polyps kaya tao sa kanila, anthozoa, flower animals. We have three main groups under subphylum anthozoa. So we have classes Octocorallia, Hexacorallia, and Serianthera. How do you differentiate these three classes? Mostly nasa itsura ng polyp, particularly dun sa tentacles, at least for Octocorallia and Hexacorallia. That's exactly why their names are Octo and Hexa. That gives you a clue. For Octocorallia, their tentacles are in multiples of eight, and each tentacle kind of has branches, these smaller branches. For Hexacorallia, the tentacles are in multiples of six, and the tentacles do not have those frilly frills at the sides. For Serianthera, they are also known as your tube anemones, okay, just nice to know. And for them, they have modified nematocysts that are called tycocysts. And what these tycosis do is that they secrete whatever they need to form the tube around the body stalk. So yung nakikita lang natin in essence sa mga tube anemone is yung oral disc na part. Just the part where the mouth is and the tentacles are. So for Octocorallia, we're just going to discuss at least the three main groups. You have Alchinacea, you have Stolonifera, and you also have Helioporacea. So for Alchinacea, they're also known as the soft corals. So ang kasama dyan, sina leather coral, Sea fans, sea whips. So noon kasi si sea fans and sea whips, they were the Gorgonian corals, Gorgonia sea. But then ngayon they were now part of yeah Alshuna sea. You also have precious corals, yung ginagawang bracelet or jewelry, bamboo corals, which is Isis. And then at least the ones that I've seen with my own eyes would be the hand or the pulse corals. One example would be Zinia. So si Zinia na katuwain itsura niya. Dancing forever. When you see this in the water, you're gonna be like, hmm, di naman siya blue, brown naman siya. Paano mo nga malalaman na blue coral and di nga mukhang blue? If, unfortunately, mabasag yung coral. When you look inside, picture that I have here was actual photo yan. Nung nasadsad nung bangka, yung corals, ganun ang nangyari kasi medyo low tide. So, sumadsad na yung boat, nabasag yung coral. Next, we have the Hexacorallian. Ito yung mga blockbuster. Pag sinabi natin corals, sila talaga usually yung very dominant. At least the ones that you really see in the reef. So you also have the soft-bodied anemones. In as much as we like to say that polyps don't really move, they kind of stay where they are, anemone, paminsan nakagalaw yan. So may mga anemone na talagang pagkabiglang may predator, it's like, oh, shoot! Alis, pag sinabi natin corals, ito na talaga yung naiisip natin, yung mga parang ano ba to, halaman ba to, o ba to. So, stony star corals or the stony corals. When you hear the word sclera, sclero, usually it has something to do with stone. Their skeletons are made of calcium carbonate. I'm so far away from the ocean, I don't really care about that. First and foremost, let's understand their role in the ecosystem. They are both predators and prey, or they're very much part of that food web in the marine ecosystem. Plus tayo, we also eat them. We call them ecosystem engineers. Particularly, they are the prime real estate. Fish that live in the corals, condo, everywhere. Sila po yun. They don't only benefit marine ecosystems, they also benefit terrestrial ecosystems, particularly coastal ecosystems. Having them there kind of dissipates the force generated by your waves. So when it reaches the shore, mas hindi na ganun ka, tsunami levels na, boom, laki ng alon. That helps stabilize your coastlines. So it also sort of prevents or slows down the erosion of your coastline. Pag naglalakad kayo sa beach, napapansin niyo yung mga bits and pieces of coral na alam mong parang na wear down na because they've been smoothened out and all of that. They contribute to adding more sand to your beaches. Calcium carbonate skeletons, calcareous, puti. Yeah, you're enjoying your white sand beaches because of those, yung mga nabasag-basag na kalansay ng mga Nidarians, ang ngayon pinapang Instagram mo. They are what we call carbon sinks. Because all that carbon that's dissolved in the water, they can use some of that to actually build their calcium carbonate skeleton. Ano ba ang carbonate? CO3. 
Pero paano ka magkaka CO3? Kailangan mo na CO2. <laughs> they store up a lot of carbon that would have otherwise just been liberated into the world as greenhouse gases. How do they benefit humans? From a more artistic or aesthetic standpoint, they are tourist attractions. They also help with local economies. They give people jobs and livelihoods. Why? Because a lot of people want to go diving. They go there to snorkel. On the flip side, in as much as they are tourist attractions, there are times when they also become tourist unattractions, distractions, whatever. When it's jellyfish season, because there's just too much of them in the water, you can't swim in the water. There are times when they just bloom, as in super dami nila that they get washed onto the shore. Carcasses of jellies everywhere. For some people, they don't like that. When you see that corals are bleaching, damn, the water is getting too warm. Ito yung talagang telltale sign. Hello, umiinit na talaga yung world. Mga deniers dyan, di ba? Ayaw nyo pa maniwala. Ditignan yung corals. Ang dami-dami ng signs, and corals are one of those organisms that actually confirm that climate change is very, very real. And that is it for Nidarians and Nidaria to watch these videos if you want to know more about the biology of this group in general. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for your time. Bye-bye.